Uh, okay, so uh, uh, this meeting is about the PVC uh, volume snapshot namespace transfer. Uh, the initial design was started by John uh, Griffiths here. Excuse me, can uh, you make it a little bigger? It seems to be pretty small. Sure. Yes. Better? Yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, so just I put the uh, bullet points here to summarize uh, what was finding. Uh, you can you have access to the document. There is a, is a link for the, the kit. Uh, so basically everything uh, would be to allow the PVCs uh, to be between transfer between uh, namespaces. So the PV will stay the same, but we will do transfer for the PVCs. Uh, they would uh, he, he proposed accept and approve mechanism. Uh, and this will be based like back in the day, like I think two years ago, that will add be annotation in the PVCs. Uh, and this annotation will uh, speak out uh, the target volume uh, that will be used. So it will initially was uh, targeting the volume clone and volume snapshot. Uh, and the original PVC will be deleted uh, before transferring. So before you start transferring, uh, you will delete the PVC. And then, sorry, it will start a transfer. And then, before the uh, the target PVC can use the original PV, uh, the original PVC has to be deleted. Uh, also, the reclaim policy of the PV, if it was like a delete on termination, it has to be overwrite, overridden to keep the PVC to be a PV. Uh, yeah, and uh, this was the first attempt, and uh, there were many discussions happening. Uh, and then this was closed. Uh, and then uh, another uh, attempt by uh, Michael Henriksen, uh, he started here and he proposed uh, uh, another CRD, which would be a storage transfer request and storage transfer approval. Uh, and, uh, and then there will be a, a controller which will detect uh, like if there is a match. And once there is a match, the transfer will be initiated. Uh, and again, the PV, the PV will be updated accordingly. Uh, the source PVC will be deleted and the target one will be created. Uh, he also uh, commented that uh, this, uh, instead of having these uh, changes in the API itself, we can have CRDs, which has a storage transfer request and storage transfer approval. Uh, and then we will have external controller and instead of editing the PV uh, seed controller in three, we'll have external controller to take care of this uh, transfer request and approval. And it will maintain the, the conditions and over, open the condition uh, will be matched. It will initiate the transfer. Uh, just, I have the link here. So you can have a better idea of, uh, yes, a better idea how this, can you see uh, the GitHub link or? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, so this is a CRD for storage transfer request. Uh, and it will have uh, the namespace, the target namespace and the target uh, name, and also the source uh, namespace that's coming from the PVC, uh, sorry, the transfer will happen. Uh, and there will be approval that's happening from the, uh, uh, from the other side, from the namespace that will be receiving the PVC. Uh, and this is a CRD for the storage transfer approval. Uh, and it will have also a similar, uh, uh, similar to the CRD of the storage transfer request. But of course, uh, we will have, uh, you know, we will swap the approval, the target namespace and source namespace. Uh, the conditions that the transfer will be initiated open are listed here. So he assumes that R uh, refers to request and A uh, refers to approval. And once these conditions are matched, then we can go ahead and tr start transferring. Uh, also, he like, uh, emphasized that uh, once the uh, matching is complete and we start transfer process, then before, before we start transfer pro or one of the things that we have to do, is to change the uh, claim policy of the PV to retain. So we make sure it will not be gone by uh, when the original or the source uh, namespace, uh, PVC will be deleted. Uh, we will delete the PVC as a source one. And then we will bind the PV to the uh, target PVC. Uh, sorry, yeah, to the namespace. And then we'll create the PVC, which will uh, have the same respects of the original one. 
and have V bind to the PV. And then after that, we can uh, change back the claim policy to the original one. Uh, these are also like uh, go structs for the for the types. I think it's the same as the CRDs. Uh, he also, yeah, he proposed stories, uh, but it's the same as uh, the original kit. Uh, but this is our very things are important. I think uh, I should uh, emphasize on that. He also emphasized that these things can be CRDs instead of entry, uh, like we change the, uh, the API's entry uh, of the community itself. We can have these as CRDs and external controller take care of this thing. Uh, exactly, instead of doing the implementation of entry. Uh, excuse, excuse me, what, what does that mean? Is the cap really required? I think this definitely the cap, right? I'm confused with this question. Uh, I didn't understand. Yeah, so I, I, um, I this is Mike, I, I did a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I guess I just wasn't, and I'm still not, I may be entirely sure on what requires a cap and what doesn't. And if there are no changes to like Kubernetes, Kubernetes, it, it, it does there have to be a cap? Yes, yes, we do require cap, yeah. Okay, that was my... Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess if, if something is like a, a project that's going to be like supported and sponsored by the SIG, it, it's still good to have a, a cap for it. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so there are also some uh, questions uh, about uh, what, how to deal with uh, current cases. Yeah, uh, just well, a, think... a quick question on this one. Uh, this is, I like this style. Uh, uh, just a, uh, this is Luis. And my question is um, on the CRs, uh, the approval one, is it a, uh, a namespaced uh, object? Did I miss that part? Yeah, they're both namespaced. Okay, so does that mean that the, um, let's say uh, a, a person's kubeconfig only allows uh, to store uh, on a certain namespace as the target, and uh, then I say, okay, uh, I approve for uh, a request coming in from someone to to move a, a volume to my namespace? It, that's the way we do it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I started working on something uh, around these way of Red Hat, and the way that I started it was I had a cluster scope resource where you could just define everything, and then I layered uh, namespace scope resources on top of that. I mean, that's just an implementation detail, but I think ultimately um, you want the namespace. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's easier to do if the person owns both namespaces; they can move them. Yeah. Uh, okay, but I, okay, I, I just want to make sure it was namespaced. That's the key. Uh, okay, so this is uh, just test plan, and uh, uh, there was no code. Uh, correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong, Michael. It's good that you are here. There was no uh, code uh, or POC for this. However, uh, no, uh, not, not at the time. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, so just. Uh, to make sure that uh, we are on the same page. So uh, these uh, are the CRDs. <clears throat> and then Christian Huffman uh, continued this work, uh, expanding also uh, on not only in PVCs, but also to uh, volume snapshots. Um, and he also follows the same uh, approach as having uh, CRDs. Uh, as you can see, it's almost the same, just add uh, some things that are specific to uh, the secrets. Uh, uh, which are part of, <clears throat> part of the storage class. But I think uh, it's the same approach mainly, uh, and even uh, the same conditions. The, the token is just something specific to the secrets, but otherwise it's almost the same conditions. He just uh, added some things, uh, like uh, instead, of, instead of having, yeah, we can have a finalizer to make sure that the BBC source uh, will be deleted instead of deleting it manually. Also, he said that we said the claim policy uh, as uh, Michael said, uh, yeah, and then uh, we just wait for the pods to start consuming and uh, do the binding. Uh, and again, reset the same uh, reclaim policy and remove the finalizer. So we have a normal PPC. Uh, specifically for, uh, for this work, the volume snapshots, uh, we would uh, create 
it's a volume snapshot instead of the PV network namespace and do the binding with the content. Sorry, yeah, a volume snapshot instead of PVC and the volume snapshot content instead of PV will be bound to this volume snapshot. Uh, and then we will delete the source one. Uh, the caveat here is that the external snapshot uh, will be need to update the immutability of some fields. These are immutable right now, but we would have, if we would go this approach, uh, we need to change this to be immutable. Uh, uh, because excuse we, me, I think I, I yeah, I think I added comments for that. I think uh, this one we, uh, it should not be, should not be mutable. It should, it should right, be that, immutable. Yeah. So yes, you actually. That's right. mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so your comments are here. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it, but yeah, of course, it's a uh, uh, problem, and that's why uh, we didn't. It's not implemented yet. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is with this plan. And again, uh, there is no work uh, that have been done uh, this way. Uh, and then there was uh, a comment on this on Christian Hoffman work. Uh, some uh, uh, Masaki Kimaru, I don't know if he is here. Uh, he took actually kicked off the first approach initiated by. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm very bad with names. By John Griffiths. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but instead of having annotations, he just added uh, sing, uh, like some specs to the PVC. Uh, specifically, to be on the same page, he added the easing spec transfer destination namespace and destination name and the source namespace and source name. Also, he added the status condition type because we would need this while doing the binding and transferring. Uh, he actually uh, did already implemented the POC for the ideal case, not any corner case. And he had some uh, tests for it. I will just uh, quickly follow you over what he proposed here. So he said, instead of doing a new uh, CRDs or API objects, uh, we can just add these fields to the BVC that I have mentioned earlier. Uh, and also, yeah, exactly. So transfer source, transfer destination, and the status condition type. Uh, this is an example for the things that will be added to the PVC. Uh, and then, but also this is relying on user interaction. So the user will modify the PVC as a source one. Uh, you will specify the destination namespace and destination name for the for the created PV. Uh, and user B have to create another uh, PVC uh, with the source destination namespace and source name of the ones that he will consume from. And this is the controller behavior in which uh, we will do the transfer. Uh, so he has to check the status first, and then he has to change the condition. Uh, I think there is actually better approach. I think it's more clear here, if you can see. Uh, he clarified this with comments here, and the uh, interaction diagram uh, shows this very clearly. So the user A will have a PVC A, and user B will have PVC B. So uh, initially, PVC A will uh, be created and will be bound to a PV, as you can see here. And then the user user A will change uh, the specs of the PVC uh, to uh, target this PVC like destination name of the of the to be the PVC B, which is this one. And then the controller will check the condition and will uh, start binding PVC B to the volume. Uh, and once it's bind, we will do the unbinding of the source PVC. And then we will change, uh, we'll do the binding here for uh, for uh, the BBCB, and then we'll change the conditions. As you can see here, the condition, uh, like there's a phase and condition both, we check for both. So here, he's, here's the condition is bound, but uh, sorry, the phase is bound, but the condition is transferring. And here, uh, the phase is bending, waiting for it to be transferred, but the condition is receiving. Uh, here, after it's already bound, so we have to unbind this, from uh, the PVCA, so we just set it to lost and already transferred, and then we can go ahead and declare this as bound to the BVCB. Uh, he also actually uh, added here that he had tested this, normal cases only, 
he created uh, PVC, uh, normal one here. And then he, uh, after it's bound, and then he modified this, added the spec. And then this was the result. And then he created another PVCB and changed the spec. And then uh, user A has to manually delete this. Yeah, and uh, from these comments, he just like uh, here, he's, he's following up on this. He, uh, he said that uh, from his point of view, this is better than the CRD or the API changes. Uh, and also we can, after that, uh, wrap this uh, into another implementation to uh, uh, target uh, volume snapshots. Uh, yeah, uh, there were many comments here and discussions. However, the last thing was that he, like, I just wanted to show you that he has already POC. So he actually, this one was the main thing, the biggest changes. And uh, he just checked for conditions in the attached and touch controller and the PV controller and open these conditions, he implements uh, the changes. And also he did not actually make a lot of changes inside because he used the util. Uh, functions which take a PVC or PV and do the most of the logic. Uh, from his point of view, this is actually uh, a working uh, implementation. Uh, but it's, uh, in my opinion, we have to make changes for the entry. And uh, I think uh, the CRD approach is better. Maybe it's quite harder to implement, but it's much more better. And I just want to go, yeah, from here where he proposed this change. Yeah. So this is the uh, uh, most recent changes uh, for this kit. And I would like to uh, hear from you your opinions. Uh, and uh, how we can proceed with that from your point of view. Um, I'm fairly new, but, but thank you so much, Mustafa, for the uh, summary you've given. Uh, the, from my point of view, again, very new, uh, I feel that um, uh, transferring ownership over storage volume, it, we have to be very careful on that uh, because of a security uh, implement um, situations that we could cause uh, by transferring the ownership of some data volume to from one namespace to another. So I, I really like uh, the acceptance uh, model uh, because it, it is trackable, is auditable, and it, it kind of maintains a level of security saying, I allow uh, this uh, volume to be transferred. Uh, uh, I understand that we can transfer, you know, uh, with the other models, but uh, from a uh, multi-tenant point of view, uh, I, I feel that is very necessary to be very careful on how we do that. So I, I like, and I'm not talking about implementation, I'm talking about mainly the usability of it. Uh, I, I feel that, uh, you know, it, it feels better to have that type of model. It's almost like a cert uh request an acceptance model there it's already in kubernetes so it's just my opinion yeah i know i know when we when we initially started looking at this um one of the one of the reasons for the the cr and the, and the transfer requests and stuff like that was was exactly that that was actually a big part of it a uh, big part of it was um one being very explicit uh, in, in actually making one of these transfers take place. But the other was also in terms of, um, it, it gave an audit trail in terms of the objects that were created and the events and everything else. Um, now, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you may be able to achieve that same thing with, with the alternate proposal of just modifying the PVC. Um, that's certainly neat. Uh, for some reason, it just seems to me we, we talked about that and, and I thought it was something we decided wasn't doable or a good idea, but um, things change. That may be a great idea now, I don't know. Um, the other thing about the API is just, it applies to many types. Obviously the, P uh, the PVC one is specific to PVC editing, you know, the PVC. Mm -hmm. um, so having a generic kind of transfer API could be useful for more resources. 
different resource types. So, you know, the PVC and bottom snapshot API would basically be the same. Um, I think that that was another argument for the request, the CRD approach. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know that semantically, like it, it, if someone has edit permission to a PVC, does that really give them the right to, you know, give it to their friend in another namespace? I don't know. Uh, that's if I, right. That, exactly. that, that was a big. That was a big question. Is there? We wanted to have limits on, on who could who could actually, you know, do a transfer, and that was part of it. So you're you're right on the money. I think. Um, but uh, so far, everything we discussed, uh, or like uh, the following up discussion, were about PVCs, and we would like also to target the uh, volume snapshots. Um, so I think we need uh, like more generic approach. It sounds like uh, so far everybody on the call prefers the CRD approach. Does anyone have a different opinion? Uh, Asaka is not here today, right? <laughs> I actually myself also uh, like the CRD approach. Uh, the question is, would we make changes in the PVC or sorry, or, uh, make controller in three uh, changes or we ha should have external controller to take care of that? I think typically we are pretty uh, has turned on adding new fields in the in PVC, which is a core entry API object. Uh, you know, unless but I think the the question is more about where the implementation is going to be done, not necessarily the API. Uh, okay, so the implementation, I think this can be this can be an external controller, right? It does not have to be added. In, if okay, so if we are doing this implementation using the approach that modify the PVC itself, then it has to be entry. We are modifying the entry controller. Uh, Mustafa does the, okay, I actually did not look at the, the POC, the third, was it, which attempt is it? The fourth attempt actually brought up by uh, um, Masaka. Does he propose to add another controller or just modifying the existing one? Uh, are you talking? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute, I didn't know. Uh, so he actually uh, changes the uh, in, uh, like entry uh, PV controller. So attach dash controller, the PV controller. Okay. Yeah. Because he did yeah, the changes I, inside. I think I think that it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what that would actually look like to have a CR and, and then actually implement the changes on the, the existing controllers and how the rest of the community would feel about that. But I think it's kind of interesting. Oh no, he um, didn't. Uh, so he, I was talking about the this POC is actually not adding mm -hmm. CR. He's just yeah. a new field to PVC. Yeah, right. And what I, what I was what I was actually wondering is um, to the question of, of whether you could modify the existing PV and PVC controllers, right? Um, mm -hmm. Even with the CR. Um, if it's CR, then we should not be that we cannot. That's okay. a, I guess that's what happened the, to the snapshot. The, the the question is is Either way, um, are there potential changes to certain states or conditions that would require changes to the entry controller? Like even if mm -hmm. even if we did it as a CR, are there some assumptions we're making that require changes to how things currently behave today? Yeah, so that's probably something that we actually need to investigate more because I don't think we have any POC for the CRD approach. Um, so yeah, I've, been, I've 
um, got something similar to the CRD approach um, that yeah. I've implemented. Uh, and I think that there would be some nice synchronization if, if we could do things in the PV controller. Um, like, you know, I, I think everything work, you can make everything work in, um, with an external controller, but it, it, it is a little, can be a little racy. Like, so if, you know, at one moment, the, you know, no pods are using the PVC and then you start this transfer process and then a pod starts using the PVC, um, you're going to have to, you may be, you know, in the middle of a transfer and then you're going to have to wait for that PVC to become unbound again, where you wouldn't get in such states if it was in the PV controller, probably. Uh, so in your implementation, you actually modified the entry PV controller? No, I didn't. I oh. didn't. Okay. But so I, you... I, I think that there, it would, uh, in some cases, give us extra nice synchronization if we did have entry. And there was a race conditions, basically, if we do this one completely. Completely out. So, so okay. So first, is it even possible to do it completely outside, out of tree? Is that something that you have already done? Yeah, it's something I, that I've got, it, and it works. Oh, okay. um, the the problem is, it's just you know what what could happen is um, you know we do all the matching that we talked about earlier, and then we start the actual transfer process, and you know we have to wait until no pods are using the PVC, and uh, you can, that's fine, but then you can start moving things over. And then if someone starts using the new PVC before it's deleted, you're going to be in this weird waiting pattern <laughs> where you started to transfer, but it was interrupted, maybe. Uh, you know, the controller was written so it'll eventually converge. But um, if, you know, the same controller that was doing the transfer was, um, you know, uh, the PV controller, I guess, maybe for uh, it, it wouldn't make that PV or PVC available to the to another pod. Uh, but so if we are making these changes in tree, does that also mean we need to add some new states there? I, I, so I, I've done everything out of tree, and it was didn't need anything. Um, but I think it may be uh, it may be cleaner to do it in tree. I, I don't know if we want to have right, right. I'm just saying, but if we are doing entry, we does it require us to add some like new states to uh, make I sure? I don't think it's re required, but it may uh, be nice. Like to have some way to um, like to say. Uh, so, so it's almost you know, like don't give, this, don't give this P don't give this PVC to any more pods. So something. okay, so it's more like we need to kind of uh, lock it or something. Like yeah, yeah. If if there was some way to yeah. say, you know, uh, yeah, the, the, once the pods that have this PVC in use are, are done, don't give it to anyone else. Would would be nice, but it, again, it's not strictly necessary. I don't think because you didn't do this one because out, you did auto treat. You can't do this anyway, right? So you didn't really lock it, but. Yeah. You may have to wait for longer. Yeah, so I, there's definitely, um, yeah, so we basically have to uh, wait until no pods are using the PVC and then delete the source PVC. And then once that thing is really gone is when you know that no, no one else is using it. And then you can um, create the new PVC and up, you know, update the PV reference and all that. Uh, but do you even allow, so who is going to delete so you just wait for somebody else to delete those, right? I mean, the pods that are using the PVC, do you? Uh, yeah, so when, you... when the, tra the transfer controller, as I wrote it, will, if the transfer is matched, but it's still in use by a pod, it'll just wait until the pod. Somebody, somebody go delete them, okay. Yeah. Okay, but that, how can you make it better if it's in tree? You still have to wait, I guess. You, you can just go ahead and. Uh... Well, you, you still have to wait, but the the, the thing that the Mike that I think Mike is pointing out, and the way I was gonna I was gonna cheat for this, um, but but the issue is what can happen is is the pod can release the volume, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then what happens is this this transfer process kicks off, 
um, or, or at least it starts. Um, but at the same time, or you know, milliseconds or seconds after or whatever, another pod is, is launched that attaches that PVC. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you've got a, a scenario there where, where bad things can happen, right? Um, what I was going to do is actually just cheat and reuse the in-use status uh, and, and say that it was in use by the, uh, <laughs> by the transfer process. I, I don't, that's not very, it's not very cool, but. <laughs> uh, I mean, we have the pod protection finalizers on PVCs that might be able to help solve some of these race issues but it, it's good to think it's good to think you know think through the scenarios um and and see uh, if the race is already covered by our existing finalizers yeah a finalizer might actually be the uh, answer here. but but that the existing one still will not help in this uh, new case right this is a i thought uh, uh john you were thinking is there a way like say do not do not try to come and use it. I mean, no new port comes until I'm done with transfer, right? So we need a, like another finalizer seems to be. The existing finalizer is only for the pod. Yeah, I didn't reason. think that the existing finalizer would work. But yeah, something new that would um, just mark the PVC to not be um, you know, assigned to any more pods. New finalizer. I don't, I don't know if Jan likes another finalizer. <laughs> he does not want more finalizers. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, but sounds like uh, sounds like we need to somehow lock it. Um, so is someone taking notes on sort of next steps? I think that might be good. Uh, some I'm. But Taking some notes, okay. Complete about maybe other people. If they're you're also taking, we can. Uh, sure. So. So I guess it sounds like you know uh, most of the folks here prefer the CRD approach. Um, I guess in terms of next steps, is there still seems to be a couple design items that need to be worked out, um, specifically around dealing with a lot of these races that we see. Uh, so yeah, should but, we uh, go ahead? No, I just want to say, like, uh, usually uh, we should start from somewhere and then under testing, we will figure out these corner cases. Uh, we cannot get everything right from the first shot, I guess. Uh, my... uh, yeah, I think we probably at least need to write down the, you know, the problems. Let's say if we, sounds like more people like the CRD approach. Let's say if we use this approach, uh, I think we should at least write down what are the risk conditions uh maybe you can also sync up with a uh, mic of lunch it's to get because it looks like he actually have done the work uh implement sure. external so as like, an external controller so what are the problems that he ran into and maybe at least we should write down those problems and then see uh if we can do better yeah i think everything can be done in the external controller but it might be nice to have like just a, a, a something we could mark on the PVC that would kind of um, not hand it out to any more pods. Okay. Uh, would it be possible that we continue in this document? Everyone can share uh, like uh, his thoughts. Uh, anything comes to him and uh, his mind, and then I mean, like regarding the corner cases or things, and then we can I can take it from here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I closed out my cap because I thought uh, Christian Huffman was continuing it. But if someone else wants to create a new one or, or I reopen mine and or um, I don't know, we can synchronize offline or something. But um, I stepped away from this for a while, but I'm willing to come in and, and help a little bit now if, um, you know, if, if that's good to whoever is wants to be in charge of things now. Sure thing. Uh, I mean, like, it's not, it's not, I'm not in charge. You know, uh, just I'm trying to revive it a bit. And of course, uh, everyone who wants to help uh, is more than welcome. Great. Okay. 
All right, just uh, for everyone who's in the call who has any saying uh, or current cases came in mind, uh, would you please uh, just share it in the document? It would be highly appreciated. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think also the, uh, the CRD approach, uh, I, I believe so, it's better as well. Yeah, so the main thing that I encountered in implementing this was there were certain time and, and times when you would could make some metadata updates and like the PB controller would um, generate an event that you probably don't want. So I had to make sure to get the order of things correct so that there weren't ever like two PVCs pointing to the same PB that would um, signal an event, I think. Um, but yeah, so uh, I can kind of write down my learnings in this document or some other document. Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, so uh, I think uh, uh, from my side, I don't have anything uh, more to say. But, uh, I'm always open uh, for uh, comments, discussions. Uh, and yeah, so uh, uh, we can take it from here. Yeah, sounds good. So yeah, so basically the uh, next two steps is just to write down uh, your comments, your suggestions in, in the stock. Uh, so I think this is already, this is shared with everybody, right? The doc. Yeah. So I, yeah. Yeah, I added this in this uh, chat. Uh, yeah, and then we can we can go from here. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? Uh, Michelle, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think when when we're getting closer to actually getting a design ready for review, um, um, I think it would also be good to just have a section talking about the previous and alternate designs, and you know pros and cons and sort of why we decided to go with this approach. I think that would be helpful for the reviewers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so at, at least this way we, uh, <laughs> if there are other comments and we say, okay, this is already covered. Uh, yeah, so at least we, we have a record of all of those. Okay, Sounds sure. good. All right then. Uh, okay, if, uh, if there's uh, nothing else, then... So I, I, I guess we, I, we can write down ideas here, but I'm wondering how we want to continue on the cap front, because I see that, I guess Christian isn't here. He, yeah, so basically, uh, so Christian says he's, he does not have cycle to work on it anymore. So uh, Mustafa has uh, agreed to pick it up. So that's okay. why, you know, he is, uh, you know, uh, driving this. So uh, I think maybe after we consolidated the uh, ideas in the stock and Mustafa, you can you can maybe submit it another calf or you can, I don't know if you want to continue on Christians. I don't know which one is easier. I think it's up to you. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, Christian one has the most recent things. So I can uh, take it from here. Yes, I create a new uh, kit with uh, new changes that we will make and the final approach uh, we will take over. And yeah, I can do this. Okay. Great. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll write down as much as I can in this document. Yeah, that'll be very helpful since you already implemented this. So <laughs> <laughs> we have some experience now. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Anything else? All right, then. That's it for today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.